Good evening, everyone. We are just waiting on Mayor Serta, but I did want to let you guys know that we are live. Evening all. Good evening, everyone. Good evening, everyone. Good evening. Hey, y'all. Good evening. Good evening, everyone. Good evening, Madam City Attorney. I'm Mina. Hi. Mark, are you working on that rotator cuff? Yeah, I got to keep be reminded to keep doing it so it doesn't get stiff on me. <laughs> I'm almost back in, in in golfing shape, uh, doing a few little swings in the backyard today. So All right. I'm getting there. I'm getting there. You hear that? Or Dodger Day first pitch? Oh, no. <laughs> not me. I'm not there yet. I tried to throw a tennis ball to my granddaughter, and that was a feat. So I had to roll it to her. She's getting ready for the Rams game. Yeah. I just want to catch a ball, that's all. <laughs> <clears throat> Mayor Serta will be on in a couple of minutes. Hello, everyone. Good evening. Madam Mayor. How are you guys? Are we ready to begin? Yes, we are, Mayor Serta. Are we live? Yes, we are live. Okay, well, let's go ahead and begin. Um, we're ready to begin today's Gardena City Council meeting for Tuesday, February the 8th, 2022. Madam City Clerk, would you call the roll, please? Mayor Serta. Here. Mayor Pro Tem Tanaka. Here. Council Member Henderson. Absolutely here. Council here. Member Cascanian. Present. Council Member Francis. Here. Madam Mayor, all members of the council are present. 
Okay, thank you. I just want to remind everybody, if you can please mute your cell phones. Um, let me just read this right quick here. In order to minimize the spread of the COVID-19 virus, Governor Newsom is, has signed AB 361. Please, please be advised that the council chambers are closed to the public and that some or all of the Guardian City Council members may be attending this meeting telephonically. If you would like to participate in the meeting, you can participate via the following options. You can view the meeting live on Spectrum Channel 22 or online at youtube.com forward slash city of Gardena. The second way to participate is prior to the meeting, you can email the deputy city clerk and public comments at cityofgardena.org by 5 p.m. on the day of the meeting and write public comments in the subject line. <clears throat> the third way to participate is via the Zoom webinar. Uh, the link is https semicolon forward slash forward slash us02wb.zoom.us forward slash 854. Three nine. I can put my glasses on. Three nine six one four nine zero two. The telephone number is area code six six nine nine zero zero nine one two eight, and the meeting ID number is eight five four three nine six one four nine zero two. Press the number nine key to raise your hand, and the number six to unmute when prompted to. If you wish to speak live on a specific agenda item during the meeting, you may use the raise your hand feature during the item you wish to speak on. For non-agenda items, you will be allowed to speak during oral communications. And during public hearings, you'll be allowed to speak when I open the public hearing. Members of the public wishing to address the city council will be given three minutes to speak. The city of Gardena thanks you in advance for helping us to take all the precautions to prevent the spreading of the COVID-19 virus. Okay, so um, tonight we did not meet for closed session. So we're gonna begin tonight with uh, our Pledge of Allegiance, which will be led by Aiden Sakin and Damian uh, Consentian from Dinker Elementary School. Immediately following that, we will have our invocation by Mayor Pro Tem uh, Tanaka. So if our two students are ready. Okay, there we go, Damian. Oh, Damian. You guys can go ahead and begin. Put your right hand over your heart. Ready? Begin. I, I pledge, pledge allegiance to, to the flag the of, the of the United States, States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Very good. If both you guys can stay on for just a couple of minutes here, um, Mayor Pro Tim, if you can lead us in tonight's invocation. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Let's pray. Father, we come to you tonight. We just ask you that uh, you continue with your grace and mercy uh, with all the things that are happening in the world, uh, you know, with all with all the issues that are uh, going on right now. We also ask you that you continue to bless us with this Omicron, with the virus, that you will protect us, that you will continue to put your hand upon us. And Father, we just ask that you uh, continue to give everybody strength, peace, and wisdom as uh, things continue to press on. We pray for our Olympic team, Father, as they are over in uh, China, um, doing the best that they can for us. But Father, we just thank you for our council that we do the best that we can for our city, all the things that we do for our constituents and everything that we do for the best interest of our people. And so Father, with that, we thank you. And we just thank you for your son and for his sake, we pray, amen. Amen. Thank you very much. Um, let's go back to our pledges for a second. Uh, tonight, uh, we were led by the Pledge of Allegiance um, by uh, two students, Aiden and Damien, both attend Dinker Avenue Elementary School. Both Aiden and Damien currently um, are students there. Um, Aiden is the school site council president and Damien is the school site council vice president. So we wanna thank both of you guys for uh, leading us in the pledge. You guys did a great job. And we're looking forward to you guys. Yeah, everybody's giving you a nice virtual clap here. And we're looking forward to you guys coming back in the future and getting the opportunity to uh, lead us in person there. So, all right. Thank you guys again. Good job. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Also, I'd like to uh, thank uh, Mayor Pro Tem for leading us tonight in uh, tonight's invocation. Um, thank you, Madam Mayor. Very much appreciate that. Okay, so with that being said, uh, next up, we have a presentation tonight. And um, I'm gonna take something, um, here it is, Never mind. 
My computer loaded up quick enough for me. There we go. Okay, so tonight we're doing a presentation, um, a special recognition to uh, Junipero Sarah High School, uh, the football team for the 2021 CIF Division III Championship and the 2021 CIF State Division I Championship. Uh, tonight, this is going to be um, accepted by the uh, the team members, um, the head coach, uh, which is Scott um, Allen, Allen Tinbergo. I hope I pronounced that right. And the athletic director, Richard. Richard, I, I apologize, uh, Richard Jenkins. Uh, so let me just read this uh, special certificate of recognition, then I'll give you guys the opportunity to uh, say something. So um, this certificate of special recognition. So we, the mayor and the council members of the city of Cardina, California, do hereby uh, declare as the following. Whereas it is a tremendous privilege and genuine sense of pride that we convey to all the members of the Junipero Serra High School football team, along with their outstanding coaches and school administration, um, our sincere congratulations on the Cavaliers 2021 triumph as the 2021 CIF State Division I champions and the 2021 CIF Division III champions. And whereas it is with um, a thrilling, well-played and triumphant 2021 football season, and even with COVID-19 pandemic and injuries, Gardena is proud of all the exceptional um, things you've done, the records you have earned, and the fine positive publicity that you have brought Sarah High School, and I'd like to mention, and Gardena. <laughs> and uh, we appreciate what you brought to our community. And this is very, this is very commendable for the team. Um, so this is uh, our official uh, public praise and recognition on behalf of the city of Gardena, uh, the citizens and the community and we hereby extend to the individual players of Sarah High School uh, football team, its coach and support staff, and school administration um, as well, uh, a special congratulations. Uh, we have a list of names here, and um, I'm not going to go through all of them here, but it lists all of the players of the football team. It looks like it's close to about 30, and uh, the coaches, uh, the school administration, and uh, the certificate says, um, in recognition of their outstanding efforts and extraordinary accomplishments in the 2021 season, and to bestow the special recognition as a token of the respect which they are regarded, I'm sorry, which uh, they are regarded, together with sincere best wishes for the athletes and the coaches of Junipero Serra High School to experience continued success for many seasons to come. And this has been signed by myself and the entire Cardena City Council. Um, if everybody could just give them a round of applause for doing such a great job. And um, I'd like to give you guys the opportunity if you would like to say anything. Well, thank you very much, Mayor. Um, we love, you know, at Sarah High School, I've, uh, this is my 23rd year as the head football coach and it's our third state championship, but we love representing the city of Gardena uh, in one of the strangest years of all time, uh, we played 21 games in 2021 with the spring season and then up into uh, winter. And, uh, you know, we've we've always felt the love from the city of Gardena. We're just a small school and uh, we take a lot of pride in our, our program. Um, and, um, you know, it's, it's been it's a great season. And thank you again so much for everything that you did, Mayor, and, and everybody uh in the council that's it's been a great it's been a great time for us well thank you richard would you like to say anything or no i just uh coach kind of uh touched on everything i just want to tip my hat off to him and the boys it was a challenging year and uh they were able to navigate through the, the trying times with the support of their parents and the school and the uh gardena community so uh we really appreciate this honor and uh thank you guys for your time Hey, thank you guys. And once again, just uh, congratulations again. Um, I was keeping track. Um, I think we had a couple of events going on that day, but we had somebody here from the city that was telling us what the score was and then when you won. So it was exciting for us, even though we weren't able to be there because I heard the games were sold out. So but, uh, congratulations again. <laughs> thank you. Thank, thank you again so much. Thank you. Okay, so next we have another pro uh, proclamation for Black History Month. Um, let's see. 
So February 2022, um, Black History Month is observed nationwide during February each year to recognize the past achievements and current status of African Americans in our country. As in coincides with the birthday of Frederick Douglass on February 14th and the birthday of U.S. President Abraham Lincoln on February 12th, the observance was officially established as Black History Month in February of 1976. The Gardena Holly Park Youth Affairs Alliance initiated the observance of Black History Month in our community as part of the Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. birthday commemorative activities in the belief that the role of history uh, in the life of the people is to give them a kind of measurement as to where they have been and where they are now. And if they understand history correctly, they will have some definition of what they must become. Gardena's annual activities during February 2022 will include the Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. commemorative, commemorative parade the morning of Saturday, February 26, 2022, followed by the Afternoon in the Park celebration at Raleigh. These events will provide the community with an opportunity to reflect on the strengths of Black heritage and family, lifestyles, as well as providing African-American citizens with a positive sense of racial identity. Uh, so at this time, um, I do hereby proclaim February as 2022 to be Black History Month in the city of Gardena and encourage all citizens to highlight those who have been an inspiration within and to our community um, and who continue to make the world a more equal and just place for future generations. Okay. That being said, we're gonna move on to appointments. And does any member of the council have any appointments to be made to any commissions, committees, councils, or boards at this time? Yes, Madam Mayor, I do. Councilman Cascanian. Go ahead. Thank you, Madam Mayor. I do have uh, Mr. Kyle Eaton. I would like to uh, appoint him to uh, as a planning commissioner. I spoke with uh, Mr. Kyle last week, actually with, uh, two weeks ago. And uh, he's a good candidate to be my commissioner, and uh, I would like to nominate him. Okay. Are there any other appointments at this time? Okay, with that being said, um, Carmen, correct me if I'm not mistaken, if he's nominating him, is he making the motion? He is making the motion. He needs a second, and Got it. I need to take a vote. Got it. Okay, second. thank you. No, All second. right. Madam City Clerk, a motion was made by Councilman Cascanian and a second by Councilmember Tanaka. Will you call the roll, please? Council <clears throat> Councilmember Tanaka, excuse yes. me, Councilmember Cascanian made the motion. Yes. Um, <clears throat> Count Mayor Pro Tem Tanaka. Yes. Councilmember Henderson. Yes. Count Councilmember Henderson. Yes. Thank you. Uh, Council Member Francis? Yes. Mayor Serta? Yes. Okay. Congratulations Thank you. to Mr. Eden. And I believe he will be sworn in uh, immediately, uh, not today, but um, within this uh, upcoming week. Okay, next we're gonna move on to consent calendar. Um, Sure, everybody's had the opportunity to take a look at it, read it, and uh, does any member of the council wish to discuss any items separately on here? Um, I do, Madam Mayor. Okay. Oh wait, I'm on the. Excuse me, I'm on the wrong item because I was looking at. Uh, okay, I'm on the wrong item. No, I don't. I take that back. Okay. Okay. Uh, um, Okay, so no one has any questions on this. Madam City Clerk, do we have anybody from the public who wishes to um, speak on any items here? No, Madam Mayor, we do not. Okay, that being said, can I take a motion to accept the consent calendar as is? No more. Is there a second? Second. Okay, Madam City Clerk, there was a motion made by Council Member Henderson and a second by Council Member Cascanian. Will you call the roll, please? Council Member Henderson? Yes. Council Member Cascanian? Yes. Mayor Pro Tem Tanaka? Yes. Council Member Francis? Yes. Mayor Serta? Yes. Okay, next up is Planning and Environmental uh, Quality Commission Action Sheet. Uh, there's a couple of items on here. Item number 10A. 
um, was actually uh, continued to the February 15th meeting. Uh, so we don't need to take any action on this. Um, next is item number 10B, which is the, uh, uh, the Planning Commission considered a request for a site plan approval to uh, construction of a new um, over 3,000 foot square foot multi-tenant commercial building with a drive-through uh, in the uh, C2 and a uh, mixed use overlay area, uh, which qualifies uh, for categorically exempt uh, exemption from the provisions of the uh, CEQA Act. And uh, it's new construction of a, of a small structure. So at this time, does any member of the council wish to call for review? Uh, I do, Madam Mayor. Okay. Um, is there a second? I'll second the review. Okay. Okay, so call for review by Councilwoman Francis. And I'm sorry, that was, who, who second that? I was looking down. Henderson. Okay. Henderson. Okay. So call for review on item number 10B. Okay. Um, next up is item number 10C, which is the... Um, City of Gardena Public Safety Plan and Environmental Justice element here. Um, on this one here, no action is actually needed at this time on uh, on this one here because this item is going to come before the City Council on the 22nd of February. So, okay. Madam Mayor, can I have a quick question? Sure. For this particular, when it comes before the City Council next time, will the um, will the community have opportunity to um, make comments? At oh, that absolutely. Time? Yes. Okay. That's yes. Fine. So, if anybody has a concern that they didn't have opportunity to make at the planning uh, meeting, this would be a, a second opportunity for them to make written or oral comments. Yes, that's correct. All right. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Any other questions or comments? Okay. Next up is oral communications. Madam Clerk, do we have anybody from the public uh, who wishes to speak at this time? No, Madam Mayor, we do not. Okay, we're going to move on to departmental items. Uh, Mr. City Manager, your COVID-19 update. Yes, thank you, Madam Mayor. I'm going to share my screen. Okay, uh, Mayor Sturdivant, members of City, City Council for tonight's COVID-19 update. Um, Total case count in the city of Gardena has risen 1,111 cases um, since the last time we reported it last month. Uh, we are now at 15,654. Total death count increased by three. Uh, we are now at 241. Uh, as far as vaccination is concerned, the children um, sector 5 through 11 is at 28.4%. Ages 12 and above is 87%. The youth uh, segment, which is 12 to 17, is at 79.2%. And our seniors, 65 and over, is at 94.9%. Uh, COVID-19 testing is still underway at Raleigh Park. And since August 23rd, 2021, uh, we have a total of 4,989 residents tested. Uh, and that's 555 tests since the last council meeting that we had. Uh, this is averaging us about 36 residents per day. And uh, Madam Mayor, so is my COVID-19 update. Okay. Does any member of the council have any questions at this time or comments? I have one. So, Mr. City Manager, at the last meeting, you mentioned that, um, can we go back? Can you share your screen again? Oh, okay. sure. At the last meeting, I think you mentioned that <clears throat> the two weeks prior to that, there, there were something like around 3,000 uh, and I don't know the exact number, somewhere around 3,000 people who tested positive? Yes, yes, okay. that's correct. So let's just say over the period of 30 days, we've had close to 4,000 in our city, a little over 4,000. Yeah, counting counting this uh, this one, it's about four, over 4,000, I believe. In one month. Okay, yes. that was all I need to know. The, the, the trend is, however, going down. Uh, like I said, 3,000 the last time, we've got 1,000 and, and change this time. Hopefully, it's, it starts to, to decrease, decrease uh, exponentially uh, in the next few weeks. Okay. You know, I do have one more question. Do um, we have people, do we ever have people call here and ask us, hey, where can I get um, 
um, you know, a, a vaccination shot at or a booster shot? And do we have information available the places around us that have that? We do have we do have the the information of the, the the locations that are available. They're they're you know available. Um, let me just stop this. Yeah, um, when we do get phone calls and inquiries, we do direct them to the, the appropriate um, uh, agencies that handle vaccinations. Yes. Okay, and those include like the grocery stores, CVS, not just like the medical facilities and places like that. That is correct. If you, uh, in fact, if you let's do this as a plug now, if you go to the myturn.com, I believe, um, takes you to the LA County website, it'll take you to CVS, uh, any any location that could possibly give you a vaccine, um, it'll take you there. And then you can sign up to, uh, you just have a uh, answer a few questions, and then you can sign up for uh, an appointment, uh, whether it's your first shot, second shot, or a booster. Okay. Okay, very good. And while we're talking about this, I mean, if the public is listening, um, it's the grocery stores, like I said, if they have a pharmacy in there, some of those you don't even need an appointment. You can just walk in and um, Mayor Pro Tem actually told me about that. And um, I went and did the same thing literally within 15 minutes. So if anybody is looking for a spot, it was very, very convenient, you know, while I was shopping. So um, just in case uh, if people are looking for somewhere convenient, that's offered here in our city. So, and okay. Madam Mayor, just to, just a plug too. Mm -hmm. uh, we do have two scheduled here at our city. Oh, uh, one in February at City Hall, and then uh, in March we have one at Raleigh Park. And those are going to be a yeah. vaccine clinics, yeah, and booster. Correct. Okay. So yeah, they'll they'll ask you which one you need. I mean, if you're Got just the first one, then. We'll, uh, we'll post the flyers on social media, uh, our website, anywhere we can we can advertise this, uh, we'll, sure, we'll be sure to, to do that. Got it, perfect, okay. Thank you, any more questions, comments, anybody? Okay, all right, that being said, let's move on to item number 15A, Mr. City Manager. Mayor Serta, members of the City Council, Agenda item 15A is resolution number number 6551, a resolution of the City Council of the City of Gardena, California, authorizing submittal of application for all Cal Recycle grants for which the City of Gardena is eligible. Public Resource co uh, Code sections 48000 authorizes Cal Recycle to offer various grants in uh, furtherance of the State of California's efforts to reduce, recycle, and reuse solid waste generated in the state, thereby preserving landfill capacity and protecting public health and safety and the environment. Cal Recycle grant application procedures require an applicant's governing body to declare by resolution certain authorizations related to the administration of Cal Recycle's grant, including submission of applications for all grants, which the city of Gardena is eligible. City manager or authorized designee can execute grant documents such as applications, agreements, and requests for payment to secure grant funds and implement the approved grants. And the resolution is effective for five years from the adoption date. The City of Gardena is submitting a grant application to CalRecycle to meet compliance requirements of SB 1383, which requires a reduction of organic waste in the landfill. The grant requires a resolution to apply for, for the grant and request payment. If the funds are awarded, the City of Gardena will hire a consultant to oversee the SB 1383 requirements, including ensuring the waste hauler collects organic separately and recovering edible food for residential and commercial residents. Uh, financial impact, uh, potentially about 80,000, around 80,167 in SB 1383 grant funds. What is required tonight is to adopt resolution number 6551. Okay, does any member of the council have any questions or comments at this time? Let's Mayor, start with, uh, let's start with Councilmember Henderson and then Councilmember Cascania. Thank you, Mr. City Manager, in regards to uh, the Cal Recycle, how many hours will we anticipate the consultant if we were to get awarded this and then hire the consultant? How many hours a week will we need the consultant to do the work? Um, we don't actually know exactly the number of hours we're going to need them for. Um, they would know that best depending on the grant that we get, uh, especially for 1383. 
that's going to be included in the scope uh, uh, in the proposal that they would have. And that's where we're going to start our potentially negotiation as far as the uh, meat and potatoes, if you will, of the contract. So at this time, we, we, we won't know until we, we generally get the grant. Right. Now, second question I have, if we don't get the grant, uh, but this is a mandate that cities have to follow, what would be our contingency plan to fulfill SB 1383? How will we do that if we didn't get the grant? We're currently in negotiations right now with a waste hauler. So it's um, part of that would be included into the uh, contract negotiations as far as what's um, uh, what can be <clears throat> what can be paid for uh, under the SB 1383 uh, mandate. Okay. So we were trying to minimize the impact to our residents and to the city, uh, hopefully by incorporating that into the contract. Okay. Thank you, Madam Mayor. That, that ends my questions. Okay, Councilmember Cascanian. You're muted still. Can you hear you? Uh, can you hear me now? I can hear you now. Yeah, okay. No, I was going to ask the second question that uh, Councilmember Henderson asked, uh, so I get my answer. But I can ask one more thing. If we don't meet, you said, it, is there an impact on us if we don't meet our recycle points? I mean, the. Well, it, 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 we would, you know, you know the, the whole thing about 1383 is to, to be able to, to be able to, for the city as a whole, and um, with the help of the, the, the waste haulers, to be able to meet all of the requirements that um, the state is mandating us. Um, at this time, there's no reason to believe that we can't meet that, given that we are, you know, we're given years in advance to uh, prepare for this. Um, Carmen, do you have anything to add on this or is that pretty much? No, I mean, just in worst case scenario, Councilman Cascanian, say hypothetically the city were to disregard this mandate, there would be, we would face potential fines. It's a daily fine that we would be facing in the thousands of dollars. Right. But as you have seen in, in prior ordinances that we've adopted, you know, we are, we're on, on pace to fully be in compliance with 1383. I see. Okay, that's, well, yeah, I understand that. But how about these uh, people, the pickers, that they go through your trash and pick the, you know, the recycles, the bottles, the aluminum cans and everything? That will affect us, uh, our numbers too. I mean, is there anything we can do about it or there's no control on it? So the, the 1383 is dealing with organic waste, which is your food scrap, not specifically um, your bottles of water or your aluminum cans which is, is diff in different categories of recyclables. Okay, thank you very much. Yeah, I don't think people are gonna pick through the organic, or maybe mice, but not people. No, I don't think so, but you know, there is a lot of people do dig, man. I know, and, I know. You know. I'm and getting funny. I spoke with, uh, you know, several, uh, you know, companies that they pick up recycle, and their complaint was that, you know, not only us, it, several other cities, you know, that. They can't meet their uh, requirement, even on the plastic bottles and the aluminums too, as well. Yeah, yeah. Okay, I, I, oh, I'm sorry. Go ahead. No, I was just going to say thank you. Okay. So here's a question I have: If we apply for this grant, what's the time frame for that? Like, is it three or four months out? And if we don't know whether or not we're going to get it, and if we're negotiating um, this with our with our hauler right now. I mean, does that prolong then your negotiation or do you have a contingency of like, hey, if we get this grant, then, you know, something changes in the contract now where that cost won't be pushed on to us or to them or, you know what I mean? So how do we work that into it? The the contract itself uh, calls for uh, certain provisions in, in what we charge them, right? So okay. if um, what we're trying to do is, is uh, recoup a lot of the cost that's uh, included in this 1383. Now, 1383, mm -hmm. you know, has a lot of uh, different um, uh, items on there that, that you know, the itemized, status itemized, and we're trying to um, incorporate that all in the, in the contract. Okay. Now, you know, whatever the, the grant that we can apply for as far as um, uh, calorie cycle uh, is concerned, may or may not be congruent to the items that, it, that are in the 1383. Uh, um, contract that we're, we're uh, trying to procure with, with the waste hauler. So these, okay. these 1383 items that, that's on the, the calorie cycle could be a little different than that. 
And if, and if so, then it's, it's, you know, it's not going to be in the contract per se. I see. Okay. Got it. Thank you. Any other questions or comments? Madam Mayor, I have, I have a question, please. Sure, go ahead. So, um, so this is the organic waste. It just not includes uh, residential, but restaurants, businesses as well. Is that right? So this, this, this grant would cover, help cover that cost or help us develop plans for collection of all, all, the, all those areas? So SB 1383 does deal with both residential and commercial mm -hmm. as far as um, separating organic waste uh, per, per the state. So it does include both for residential and commercial. Okay, and are, do we have a consultant that's writing a grant for us or helping us with, with the writing of this grant? Not yet. Not, not, yet. not for the, this the, the grant itself, actually, I, I want to give the accolade as being, being done in-house. Um, Director Rigg, if, I believe he's online. Um, City Manager Osorio, he can, I know he's had his staff working on this grant. So I do want to give uh, praise to to his staff for, for this grant proposal. Mm -hmm. Very good. And is it is this a one-time grant or can we apply annually? So I think we're the the resolution that you have in front of you tonight is for the city to be able to apply for a calorie cycle grant. Okay. The example that was given in the actual resolution is 1383. But this, you know, we have five years to, you know, apply for whatever grant that we want. Okay. Um, so this resolution is good for five years. All right, thank you. And but the uh, actual mandate goes to that because I remember when the consultant first told us about, it, I was a bit concerned that um, the state had given us a mandate that an unfunded mandate, and I didn't think that was quite fair. So. Yeah, they, they they basically tried. They told us to to find a way to get it done, and either you know, I mean, there's just you know so many different ways that you can pay for that, right? Okay. Either you know the city for uh, you know pays the the mandate, uh, which it's not sustainable, right? Or you know what most cities, in fact, all cities are doing is technically rewriting the contracts with waste haulers, and you know you you you've got to pass the the cost to the residents and to the commercial accounts. Um, we're currently in negotiations right now with our waste haulers, so I can't really talk about the specifics of what that is, but we're trying to make it as favorable as possible uh, for our residents. Okay. And that's the goal. Well, at least we're getting a little help. Thank you. We're trying to aim actually is no change for our residents. That is the goal. That's a good goal. Yeah, very much so. Any other questions? Madam City Clerk, do we have anybody from the public wishing to speak on this item here? <clears throat> no, we do not, Madam Mayor. Okay. Um, one other question I have, we're going to have like a full educational type of campaign to the community on this, correct? As well? Absolutely, Madam Mayor. I mean, this is okay. the, this requires not only, uh, you know, the city to enact and follow what the state has mandated us. Okay. Uh, not only does the waste hauler have to do their part as far as technology and their, the way they do it, but also the residents would have to get involved as well, okay. um, you know, when sorting out and, you know, we'll have a complete, you know, community outreach as far as rolling this out. Got it. Okay. Sounds good. I know one of the neighboring cities right outside of Cardina um, where they were requiring uh, the residents, um, you know, to separate the organic. I'm sure they did some type of outreach, but they just dumped in everybody's yard these little funny green and white buckets. And it was literally almost like it was thrown into the, you know, the different residence yard. And um, when I saw it, I told someone, I was like, that looks like somebody just threw some bucket in your yard. You should toss it. And it took them a, a, a day or two to realize that that was what they were supposed to put their organic waste in. So um, I know we always do a really good job of educating the community. But when I saw what this other waste hauler did, I was like, that is really tacky. So, well, Madam Mayor, I think I think this mandate is really um it's really confusing, uh, yeah. to say the least. I mean, if we did, you know, some kind of a one-time, you know, informational, you know, whether mail or whatever, um, to our residents and just tell them, hey, this is what you're supposed to be doing. I think we would be doing a disservice to the to the community. 
Right. And with, what we're planning to do is really sit down along with our, our partners, which is a waste hauler, mm-hmm. uh, to sit down and explain exactly what is what does this and what this does and how to do it. Right. Um, with, you know, in-person community, you know, actually, you know, showing them exactly how to do it instead right. of just, you know, writing, you know, sending an email blast or whatever. That, that's not that's never going to work if, if that's what we did. Okay. Uh, I, I might add that that um, this this has been occurring in Europe, in European countries for some time now. So we might look to one of the other models that's used uh, in one of the other countries or how to how to put in put this in uh, play, put it in place. So we're a little slow, a little behind on this particular issue. Okay. Hmm. Any other questions or comments? No. Okay. All right, that being said, um, can I get a motion to adopt resolution number 6551? So moved. Is there a second? Second. Okay. Madam City Clerk, there was a motion made by Councilwoman Francis and a second by uh, Councilmember Cascanian. Will you call the roll, please? Councilmember Francis. Yes. Councilmember Cascanian. Yes. Mayor Pro Tem Tanaka. Yes. Uh, Council Member Henderson. Yeah. Mayor Serta. Yes. Okay, next up is item number 15B, Mr. City Manager. Mayor Serta, members of the City Council, agenda item 15B is to award professional services contract for the sewer master plan project, job number 990, to Corolla Engineering Incorporated in the amount of 598000 City of Gardena provides wastewater collection services to the entire city within its 6.2 square mile boundary. The city's existing wa- wastewater collection system is made up of a network of gravity sewers. The city has over 88 miles of varying pipes sizes with uh, approximately 2,080 manholes and own and maintain one lift station. Overall goals for developing and implementing a sewer master plan is to evaluate the existing condition of the sewer system, ensure adequate capacity exists to effectively collect and transport sewage generated by the city, and to identify and plan for capital improvement programs. The plan also helps ensure that the city remains compliant with new and constantly updated state regulations related to sewer system management and project scope consists of data collection, sewer CCTV survey, manhole inspection, flow monitoring, lift station assessment to develop technical report, identify capacity constraints, uh, land use population updates, and capital improvement programs. Additionally, the end result of the project is to develop a sewer GIS inventory, uh, sewer system management plan update or SSMP for state requirements, and a sewer d- design manual to provide guidelines for the analysis and design of sewer facilities. In June 2021, Public Courts Department uh, released an RFP for a sewer master plan 2021 services and distributed to engineering firms throughout California utilizing the information IMS platform. Staff contacted 13 regional consultants that uh, provide sewer master plan services on, and on September 20th, 2021, four proposals were received, two sealed envelopes were received from each of the firms, uh, one with the firm's proposed proposal and qualifications and the other with the firm's fees. Director of Public Works, Principal Engineer and Associate Engineer evaluated the written proposal using the weighted criteria regarding the experience of the, fir- uh, the team, qualifications, project understanding, schedule, cost, relevant project experiences, response of scope of services and level of comfort and familiarity with the city's existing system. Subsequently, the top two firms, Canon Corporation and Corolla Engineering Incorporated were invited to participate in an interview on October 26, 2021. Both firms presented their experience, project approach, team resume and participated in a question and answer section session uh, within the city. The staff review team selected Corolla Engineering Incorporated based on their qualifications, experiences, knowledge of the project and presentation. In the past 15 years, they have completed 100 sewer master plans, including the city of Torrance, and had exceptional feedback from the professional service, professional references. Corolla Engineering Incorporated's fee was also the second lowest proposal, overall proposal, and is reasonable. Founded in 1933, Corolla Engineering is a full service environmental engineering firm that has been exclusively providing water and wastewater services for over 88 years. 
Staff respectfully recommends that the, the council approve a professional service contract in a form approved by the city attorney, the Corolla Engineers Incorporated, for the sewer master plan project job number 990 in the amount of 598000 The budget amount is 600000 and the funding source is sewer funds. Uh, what's uh, required tonight is to approve the professional services contract. Okay. So I believe there is cameras on here. I mean, uh, um, I believe there's a presentation tonight by the consultant. Alan, would you like to introduce him? I would. Um, Inga Wersmer with Corolla Engineers is a top-notch engineer. We're very proud to have her on the team. Uh, they've done many, many other plans. Uh, I've been through this before uh, in a couple other cities. It's a it's a, a very arduous process, um, but I'm very, very confident that they're going to do a fine job. And I would uh, hand off to Ms. Wersma uh, to give the presentation tonight. Thank you. Thank you, everybody, for your time and good evening. Uh, my name is Inge Wersma. I'm the vice president with Coral Engineers. I've been working there for about 15 years, and I've been 25 years and uh, doing dedicated to master planning for utilities, water, wastewater, recycled water, and stormwater systems. So I'll give you a brief uh, presentation here. I'll share my screen uh, to um, go through some of the slides. Um, one second, please. Okay. So, um, I will talk briefly about the project goals and, and background and the purpose of this project and the introduction already quite a few things were mentioned. Then I'll highlight some of the key elements of the sewer master plan project and then I'll talk a bit, little bit about the experience of Corolla engineers and the timeline of this project and at the end I'm happy to answer any questions. So the Master plan project goals are really, as a starting point, evaluating the existing conditions of the city's sewer collection system and uh, assess whether there's any, um, if, if it has enough capacity to collect and transport all the wastewater and to make sure that the city uh, remains compliant with all the state regulations. Through the process of this master plan, we will identify, plan and prioritize capital improvement projects for the next 20 years and we will phase them into near, mid, and long-term periods. In addition, this project involves the development of a sewer system management plan, which is a separate deliverable uh, required by the state, um, preparation of a sewer design manual, specifically helpful to um, work with developers uh, when growth comes and because the city is working on the housing element of the new general plan and the new already um, hmm, and RHNA uh, allocations that are pretty substantial growth and developers are uh, going to be important to work with and make sure that those designs are consistent. So that's a unique element included in this project. And it also includes a, a complete asset inventory and um, the development of a sewer system GIS, a geographical information system and hydraulic model. So it's quite a lot of accomplishments at the end of the project. Um, but the real purpose is shown on the right, develop a long-term sewer system capital improvement plan that will guide the city with the investments over the next 20 years. Make sure that investments are made at the right time and at the right place and that projects have the right size, not too big, not too small, not too early, not too late, kind of that kind of stuff. Uh, in addition, we will um, help uh, prepare the sewer system management plan, develop design manual, and there's an, uh, task included to provide as needed hydraulic modeling services after the project if the city so desires. Some of the key elements of this project include quite a bit of field work, uh, including the completion of the CCTV inspection. The city a couple of years already uh, conducted 80 of its 88 miles of sewer collection system CCTV. And due to budget constraints, there's eight miles remaining, which is included in this project. Um, also inspection of all the 2000 manholes for a little bit more than 2000, uh, a multidisciplinary site visit and a condition assessment of the lift station and in-field flow monitoring 
to capture actual flow conditions to help develop a hydraulic model. The city currently just has CAD drawings for its sewer collection system. So at the end of this project, uh, we would deliver a sewer system GIS that can be used uh, not just by the city engineering staff, but through a viewer, which is a separate agenda item later on the, the agenda today. I think it's item 15C. And through a viewer, the public would also have access and understanding of the information that would be developed as part of this project up to the information that the city desires to share. Uh, hydraulic model would be created and ways for the flow projections will be prepared and a design manual will be de developed. When it comes to the existing system condition assessment, uh, as I said, uh, it would include eight miles of CCTV inspection to complete the full uh, database uh, assessment using cameras that roll on a device inside the sewer collection mains, recording if there's any areas with cracks or root intrusion or other structural damage that needs to be addressed now or in the future. Uh, physical manual inspections of all 2080 manholes, um, collecting photos, collecting the GPS coordinates, and doing a lift station condition assessment with multiple disciplines, including mechanical and structural engineers. The GIS information will be developed using the city's existing um, AutoCAD drawings that are not really in any coordinate system yet. But by doing the manual inspections, we can um, develop a sewer system GIS by um, connecting all that information to the actual GPS coordinates that will be captured when the inspections will be done. And then there will be a sewer system GIS available that will have multiple purposes for field crews, as well as the development of this sewer system hydraulic model that's really the core um, piece of doing any master plan is having a model of a system, whether it's a water or a wastewater system, and to do calculations and assess capacity needs. So the sewer system GIS will have information on the pipeline diameters, materials, what the slopes and manhole invert elevations are. And we will connect that then with the data gathered in the field to the flow monitoring. It's really important to gather both dry and wet conditions, which can be tricky in Southern California, but we're still in the wet season. So, and there's opportunity to capture wet weather conditions. And that will be helpful to make sure that the hydraulic model will be calibrated using existing sewer flows for both dry and wet conditions to have confidence in this tool. Capturing this data is really critical for the hydraulic modeling effort. Um, just like we did for the city of Torrance, um, the city of Cardenas wastewater collection system discharges into the LA County trunk sewer system. And so to understand what's going on within the collection system, we need to really capture the flow at, at specific locations to understand the hydraulics. In addition, after the model is created and calibrated for existing conditions, we need to look forward to the next 20 years and develop based for the flow projections. Uh, as I mentioned earlier, the city has that um, RHNA allocation of 5,700 and something units that will create some areas where there's really going to be some additional flows going through the system. So the hydraulic model will be helpful to assess if there's any capacity constraints created by those new um, units that are going to be developed and we'll look at again on their dry and wet conditions to develop ultimately a CIP for the capacity projects but also looking at rehabilitation and replacement projects r, &R projects due to aging infrastructure as well as O&M operations and maintenance recommendations there may be some areas where we will make recommendations about different maintenance protocols or operating the system more efficiently or using new technology and telemetry, similar to you be using those smart covers and it's been really helpful for our city's operations to avoid any sewer system overflows are possible. The deliverables of this project are um, quite a few. Um, the goal, of course, developing a capital improvement plan. So that will be uh, provided and it'll be a dynamic planning tool um, the hydraulic model is a really important deliverable that the city can use for many years. Uh, the sewer design manual will be 
will be helpful for both city staff, but also to hand out to developers to um, get their designs done in a consistent manner. And then state compliance with the sewer system management plan that needs to be updated. And of course, the final report, the master plan. The sewer system management plan is its own deliverable and it really um, helps achieve regulatory compliance. In 2021, the regulations have been changed again. Carvalho has been fortunate to work for a variety of cities and have prepared more than 20 of these SSMPs in recent years. So, and we are in close contact with the state board to really understand the requirements to ensure that the city will be in compliance with these uh, new requirements. The prioritized CLP will provide confidence that the city can make the right investments at the right time. We will phase uh, the projects by category and by time period, and if needed, uh, can assess if there's any rate adjustments required to generate enough revenue to pay for those projects that are recommended. Uh, but the system is in fairly good shape, so hopefully uh, there's no significant rate adjustments needed for the CIP, but we would know that um, at the end of the project. Real briefly on Carollo's experience, as already mentioned in the introduction, uh, Carollo was founded in 1933. We have about 1,100, a little over 1,100 employees, and we have offices throughout the U.S., but the majority of our offices are on the West Coast and we're headquartered in California. And we are one of the few consulting firms that is solely dedicated to the water sector. And the planning group that I'm part of and that, that I've been helping build the last 15 years has a staff of 50 to that is dedicated to planning and hydraulic modeling. And we have worked on more than 100 sewer master plans in the last 15 years in just the state of California. And we'll leverage that experience with efficient tools to help develop the sewer master plan for the city of Gardena. When it comes to the project timeline, uh, assuming uh, the project can uh, start around the beginning of March, we anticipate that we can complete the master plan report in draft format in uh, mid-October with a final plan early November, just before the holidays. And the SSMP will be on the same time schedule and the design manual can be accelerated a little bit. A couple of key benefits of this sewer master plan project is that it will provide the city a roadmap to guide with your um, investments, make sure that the city has adequate hydraulic system capacity for years to come, avoiding any public nuisance or public health issues with sewer system overflows, especially during wet weather conditions, make sure that the city can be proactively addressing any aging infrastructure needs and achieve regulatory compliance. And with that, I want to open it up to any questions. Okay, thank you. Very informative presentation. Does any member of the council have any questions at this time? <clears throat> I have a couple. Okay, go ahead. You mentioned the uh, smart manhole. Can you tell me a little bit about that? Yeah, I learned that today yeah, that the that. city is using those. And uh, <laughs> so what it does, um, it has basically a level sensor under the manhole cover. And it has a setting, what is the maximum depth of the water that would be desired? Let's say that be 10 feet below ground. And if that is less, if the water levels start rising into the manhole, you basically have a surcharging condition. And then it will send a message to the operation staff say, hey, we may have a blockage. Let's go out there quickly and, and fix it. So I believe there's about 20 or 25 of those in the city. And this is a great example of using technology to be able to react quickly to any um, issues in the system. So there's many other technologies out there that are evolving quickly. And so uh, we like to kind of um, advise cities on potentially using those types of tools. Yeah, thank you. Um, I, this uh, kind of uh, relaxes one of my concerns about because we have all this new development going on and uh, the infrastructure. When I talk about infrastructure, this is one of the main infrastructure issues that I, I had great concern about. And I like the idea that uh, we're getting a manual so that when you're not here, we have something that we can we can look into and say, well, this, this is how, how it's supposed to work. I just had um, one, uh, one concern. Uh, it's in the consultant agreement. And I think it's item number 22 about employment. You mentioned um, aliens. 
use the term alien. What what's a um, I'm not sure what what an alien is. Is sorry, you talking about hiring people from Mars or? No. <laughs> what are you talking about people or? Yeah. What, also, Women Francis, is? I'll I'll take that since it's a city's uh, prior template. It's for purpose. It's language that's used, unfortunately. I, although I share your opinion about the term alien, purposes yeah. of language that's used by you know at the federal level and IRS purposes. Uh, well, but that it's not the it's not a Corollo's uh, agreement. It's uh, okay. literally language that's taken from there in okay. compliance with federal law. Yeah, I heard that uh, President Biden is um, is looking forward to using a more humanizing term. Can we, even though it's Federal law, can we, I guess we can't change it or it has to stay that way or can we put like little parentheses, something meaning, because I, I am. Um, I will look into that at Councilwoman Francis and if I can change that, then I will look into that if that's okay with the rest of the council. I mean, everything else is fine, but when I said that, ooh, alien, I'm, maybe I'm just a little bit sensitive, but um so thank I, I think I think I've gotten several nods of yes. Yeah, so I will I will look into that. And if it's legally acceptable, then we will go ahead and modify that. Very good. Thank you. Any more questions? Um Councilman Cascanian. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Uh very nice presentation. Thank you very much. Uh, my question is it comes to the dollars. So we have this contract is going to be effective the day of the adoption for next five years and it's five hundred ninety eight thousand dollars right yes for five years five ninety eight it, it's a one-time fee for all the work and so we are uh scheduled to complete all the work this year um in, it's not five times <laughs> five yeah, i know yeah it's, it's a but you were fee. but you were mentioning something about 20 years i didn't catch that thing what, what? oh okay yeah, so we will make a forecast of waste water flows for the next 20 years. So uh, with, with growth and also incorporating water conservation, which actually reduces waste water flows generally, we'll make a forecast and do an analysis about what the system capacity needs are 20 years from today. So that's just like on a master plan, you look at existing conditions and you look at future conditions. So the work wouldn't continue that long. It's just kind of looking into the future. So you size things for... Um, up to 20 years from today. Does that help clarify? Yes, yes. Okay. Uh, and one more concern, my uh, colleague, uh, Councilwoman Francis mentioned, you know, all these projects coming in, in the city and the state wants us to put, you know, 5,000 plus, you know, housing elements here. So are you guys taking that under consideration that, you know, maybe in 10 years is going to be, you know, 3,000 more households in the city? So are all these taken under consideration? I mean, Absolutely. 10 years later, you're not going to come back telling me that, oh, you know, the pipes now, which is six inch down, we have to put 12 inch pipes or whatever, you know, I mean, just an example I'm giving you. Yeah, no, I understand. Um, so during the project, when we do the task of the future waste sort of flow projections, we will work with your staff to make reasonable assumptions. Typically, we make like a forecasting envelope because the further you go in time, the more uncertainty you incur. And so the RHA allocation, the 5,000, um, I wrote it down, 5,735 units will generate a certain wastewater flow based on the densities that are associated with those unit, units. And that will be incorporated in the base flow for 20, year 2030 or 2029 is when these uh, allocations are due. But then we go forward another 10 years. And so there's more uncertainty. And so we'll do analysis under a variety of uh, scenarios and to help understand what, what triggers additional pipeline sizing. And so when time progresses and you monitor where these developments really take place, you can kind of adjust and uh, make sure you're not building something that's too big, but definitely not building something too small because these pipes are not around for the next 80 years. And so I wanna make sure um, that's incorporated. We just completed a sewer master plan for the city of South Pasadena, and they also have a very high allocation and we we're also updating the housing element in our general plan and work through the exact same issue of dealing with this very fast growth, understanding where spatially does this happen, which pipelines are impacted and which are not. But also in the CIP, differentiating between who needs to pay for what, providing you a document that says this is for existing ratepayers, existing residents, 
the capacity needs are such and such, or there are no improvements needed. And these other uh, projection, uh, projects and the costs associated with those are really triggered by growth. So you can uh, have something in hand to work with developers, make sure that when the developer goes in, they pay their fair share. Thank you very much. Yeah. Mark? Thank you, Madam Mayor. Thank you for the presentation. I had a couple of questions in regards to, well, we've already done 80 miles of our sewage pipe and there's another eight remaining and we, we can only afford so many smart manholes and everything. Would this study give us recommendations to then cover the rest of the manholes or maybe strategically get smart manholes around the city <laughs> to give them some accurate measurements or will that not be included in the study of these recommendations? Actually, the, this project and, and the, this project amount will basically complete the needs. We, you, the city has already assessed 80 miles. So the last 80 mile, eight miles of the system, because the city is total 88 miles, will be completed, the CCTV. And it also covers all the 2,080 manholes. So the combination of full CCTV, the other CCTV was just done a few years ago, combined with all the manholes, you will have a complete up-to-date data set uh, that we can use for the C and develop the CIP. So there's no additional needs. Did I understand your question correctly? Well, no, in regards to, because we only have a few smart manholes, we're oh, all 2080, but will you recommend that we make them all smart or just? No, strategic? no strategic locations. And uh, we will uh, work with our staff during the calibration and understand how helpful they have been in which locations, understand some of their location bottlenecks, and so there's some areas where there's frequently some uh, surcharging going on and there's no smart manholes in those locations yet. We would make recommendations, but very targeted because, you know, those are, of course, are a lot more involved and cost more money than yeah. a regular manhole cover. Yeah. The, the existing, if I may add, the, the existing smart, pole, uh, smart manhole covers we have, they're located where we've had uh, close to overflows or overflows in the past. And those are a lot of locations where the sewers have to go under another structure that could be under a storm drain channel or under a railroad. And so what happens is in those locations, they need extra cleaning. So what the smart hole manholes, uh, the manhole covers are strategically located so that we have to go out there and clean them more rapidly so it lets us know. So I don't see the need for more if possibly if we have some additional capacity uh, projects we would actually need less of them. So we're, we're, we're confident we have enough at this point and, and we may be able to eliminate some of them. Okay, thank you. Any more questions? I have a couple of questions. Um, so in our last contract, did we only have it so it would cover um, 80 miles and not the last eight? I guess this is maybe for the city manager, or Alan? Yeah, so, so before my time, Mm -hmm. But what we did is the purpose of the videotaping was to determine where areas of sewers were that needed to be lined. Okay. So one thing that we try to do with sewer pipes, uh, similar to, to roadways, if you get ahead of the curve and you, 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 may, you maintain them, you don't have complete failures and huge amounts of expense. So the city went through a process. We videotaped uh, almost all the sewers in the city. My understanding is there was a budget constraint. It was also that there were sewers they were newer and had already been lined, so there was no need to videotape them for a condition assessment. So there were some other purposes for not doing it, but uh, yeah, at this point, we'll, we'll do the rest of them and, and understand what condition they're in. Okay, I see. And then the other question I have is, in a city like ours, 88 miles, and <clears throat> when these were originally put in, how often should we videotape or you know go through and check our sewers to see as far as when they need to be replaced? So that's 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 a, a, a combination of maintenance and capital projects. What we do in our city, we have a, we have a I love our sewer maintenance program. You allowed us to buy the new sewer maintenance truck. And the fact is, we have a program where we maintain and clean every city in the sewer at least once a year. Okay. And our hot spots, those areas under railroads and the like, we do every three months. So by doing that, we've kept our sewers in really good shape. We have not had a sewage overflow in the public right away in three years which is incredible. Um, the value of the sewer master plan is, is to keep that up. When I started with the Pal city of Palos Verde States years ago, we were having 40 overflows a year. And after the implementation of the uh, the plan, we were down to four a year. 
So sewers should last 60 to 70 years. Okay. They're vitrified clay pipe. If they flow well, they last longer. If they have minimal root intrusion, they even last longer. Um, the results of the past videotaping is that we've got good, good uh, soil in the city, so they're not cracking. Okay. We have good maintenance, so we're not getting grease buildup or otherwise. And we don't have a lot of root intrusion. So we're very fortunate that way. So we, we, we've got good sewers. And part of this program is to do a lining program and the like to make sure we maintain them. Uh, a very rough um, napkin type estimate is our sewers to replace them today would be somewhere between 100 and $150 million. So to keep them maintained, operational, keep the capacity up, to line them, uh, lining a sewer is 25 cents on the dollar compared to replacing them. Mm -hmm. So if we can get ahead of it, uh, the, the uh, deterioration of the sewers with this type of program, it, it'll, it'll save us a tremendous amount of money in the end. The timing is interesting as well. I, sometimes we're just lucky. And as uh, Inga explained, we just have the new SSMP regulations. We just have the new RENA number so we can forecast in the future. And, and it's good that we're doing this now. We, we don't wanna be in the news like some of our neighboring cities have with massive sewer uh, spills. So we're, we're gonna maintain our sewers and we're gonna keep our, our sewers flowing safely. We're not gonna have backups in homes and businesses and we're going to stay out of the news. That's a good thing. Um, so two quick questions here. So let's just say from the time that sewers were initially installed in Gardena, how old would you say some, some of our oldest sewers might be if you if you had to, from the time the city was incorporated maybe, or? I would say, I've, I mean, I've seen buildings, some of the historic buildings are in the 10s and 20s, 1910, 1920. So, and, and it's probably they may not have had sewers at that time. Most of the sewers in LA County were through assessment districts mm -hmm. in the 50s. So it's reasonable to expect most of our sewers are probably 70 years old or a lot of them are. Okay. So they're, they're getting older. Um, they, they need some attention. Okay. And then the last question I have as it relates to um, this plan will help for the right, the right type of investment. So for instance, let's just say a particular project is coming in and they, maybe let's just say it's an apartment building and they want to put, I don't know, 300 apartments in there or something like that. Based on this plan right here, we can say, well, hold on a second. Our sewers can't handle this because it's too dense versus, you know, if you guys went down to a hundred, I mean, that's, I don't want to say it's leverage, but you know, to say it's not going to equally match to that, it, would that be correct understanding? So, so a couple of things, sorry, I, I, I get excited about this. So um, <laughs> what, what I've done in other cities and what we would do with Corolla mm -hmm. is we have the, the developer go work with Corolla and they will model their specific development and see if it's causing any overcapacity issues. Okay. And then we need they need to address it from there. One, one, this is the easy bridge to cross right now, which is to develop the sewer master plan and develop the needs. Okay. The harder decision we'll eventually need to make is how do we get that money to be paid for so we can do those improvements. We could potentially do an across the board citywide sewer assessment, which I've done in other cities, or you can do it a project by project assessment. And so we that's a, that's a decision for another day. But first we just need to know what, what those needs are. And we need to make sure with that new development, we can make sure they're not overtaxing the system and, and that they're paying their fair share. Got it. Okay, thank you. That's all I have. Are there any other questions? Oh, Mark, go ahead. I have a question for Mr. City Manager. So speaking of taxing, in, in what what supports the sewer fund? Is that from our property tax? We get a portion from a portion through LA County. Where do, where does that fund get built from, Mr. City Manager? I believe that that's come from comes from your uh, your water bill, or, or just our water bill. Okay. Yeah. All right. Okay. That's very common. Typically, it's prorated on the water bill because the more water people use indoors, the more wastewater gets generated. Um, but every city or district uh, may have a little bit different structure to it, okay. but they're typically tight. It's very common. Okay. Thank you. Got it. Thank you. Any other questions? Can, uh, uh, Director have... Riggs, Director Riggs, do we do we share any of our sewers with the county? We don't share them. What we do is we have, so the network of sewers is, uh, no, we don't. We have our local network of sewers 
and they discharge into the county sanitation district sewer system that then goes down to the Carson treatment plant. Okay, so so there would be no cost chain or anything like that. No, no good good question, but no. Okay, thanks. Okay, Cascadia. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Very quick, uh, maybe uh, Alan can answer this question. So, Madam Mayor asked the question that if there is a 300 unit is going to build, and you know, they, they say it might work, it might not. So they have to go consult uh, Carlo, uh, the whoever, you know. And uh, if they said yes, you know, you can you know hook up to your your 100 unit apartment, and it would be no issue. And if there is a problem. Who's responsible for this? So I don't want to be on the news, as you mentioned earlier. So who's going to be responsible for this? The city or our, you know, contractor? That That's a policy decision in the end. Uh, I've been in cities in which the developer is responsible for the entire upsizing of the pipes. Uh, I've been in other cities in which uh, I've done design development where there's another option is they detain the sewage on site and discharge the sewage at night when there's capacity in the system. Um, the, other, the other option is that the city's collecting a, an overall fee for sewer uh, capacity and the city has the money to upgrade the pipe as part of an overall capacity enhancement program and expedites that project in order to accommodate the, the development. So there's a lot of options and it comes down to really some policy decisions. Okay. So what, what we've, we've done in the past developments is that we've incorporated the um, studies and we, we basically uh, make the developers um, actually uh, include that in their proposal as far as upsizing the, the sewer uh, pipes. So we have made the developers uh, part of their plan, uh, overall budget, uh, to include that um, upsizing because it could be you know um, quite substantial as far as the cost uh, depending on the you know the number of units etc cetera, etc cetera, could be anywhere from five hundred thousand to a million dollars in some cases yeah. right. okay, thank you yeah I may have one other question for a city staff in regards to nobody told Corolla how much we had in the sewer fund did they, they <laughs> right up right up to the line want to make sure no and just 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 to explain our selection process it, very very transparent we went out to the world um, through IMS which is a, a system kind of like Dodge reports for construction projects this is for design uh, services we got really good proposals um, we did a two bid um, proposal or two two envelope uh, proposal we didn't look at prices until we ranked them and then we took a look at the the, the cost and fortunately, Corolla was the second lowest, so they, they were had a good price. And so we could award it to them on the value uh, at, a, at a very reasonable price. Okay. Any more questions or comments? Madam City Clerk, do we have anybody from the public wishing to uh, speak on this item? No, we do not, Madam Mayor. Okay. If there, <clears throat> if there are no more questions or comments, then can I get a motion? to uh, approve the professional service contract with Carrillo Engineering. So moved. Okay, um, I'm sorry, Councilwoman Francis raised her hand. Second. Uh, okay, thank you. Madam City Clerk, uh, motion was made by Councilwoman Francis and a second by Mayor Pro Tem Tanaka. Will you call the roll, please? Oh, wait a minute, I'm sorry. If you could hold on one second. I'm sorry, uh, Ms. Worsama, you were getting ready to say something right before we um, no, it's but, fine. Did you still want <laughs> this to? This is such an interesting discussion. No, it's fine. Go proceed, Madam Mayor. Okay. All right. Thank you. I'm sorry about that. I forgot. Go ahead, um, Madam City Clerk. Council Member Francis. <clears throat> yes. Mayor Pro Tem Tanaka. Yes. Council Member Henderson. Yes. Council Member Cascanian. Yes. Mayor Serta. Yes. Okay, well, congratulations on uh, receiving uh, the award. And uh, sometimes it gets difficult trying to watch all the reactions and I'm waiting to hear somebody say something. So um, thank you for having patience with us because this Zoom is still very new, even though we've been doing it for almost two years now. So um, thank okay. you for the opportunity and we look forward to working with the city of Cardina. Really, really appreciate your opportunity and your time tonight. Thank you. Right, okay, with that, um, being done there, let's move on to item number 15C, 
Mr. City Manager. Mayor Serta, members of the City Council. Agenda item 15C is to award construction contract to the police station sewer pump replacement project job number 511 to OC Pump Company in the amount of 80243 cents and declare California Environmental Quality Act or CEQA exemption. Staff respectfully recommends that Council award the construction contract to the police station sewer pump replacement project job number 511 to OC Pump Company. Uh, from Anaheim, California, in the amount of $80,243.82, declare this project to be categorical, categorically exempt under the CEQA Class 1, Section 15301D as rehab of existing facilities. The project bids were solicited under the California Uniform Construction Cost Accounting uh, Procedures and the City Resolution 6059, which projects that up to $200,000 to be con contracted by utilizing the pre-qualification list. The following bids were received by January 28, 2022, and OC Pump Company submitted the lowest responsive bid. Uh, OC Pump Company at 80,243.82, Pump Man SoCal at 122,849, Chimney Systems at 131,934 and 39 cents, and MMC Incorporated at 147,410. OC Pump Company is a state licensed specialty contractor established in 1948 with verified pump insulation experience and is currently in the city's informal bidding contractors list. Their qualifications, participation in the mandatory job walk and understanding of the project make them ideally suited to remove and replace the police station sewer pump system. The current condition of the sewer pump system is considered poor at its best. One of the two pumps is no longer operational, which leaves the system without backup capability should the remaining pump fail. The remaining pump has developed cracking in the piping and is leaking and causing a foul odor uh, in the building. The pump is also prone to clogging due to the age and condition of the overall system. As a result of the current condition, Public Works has targeted replacement of the pumps as a priority and forecasted the replacement of the system for April 2022 due to the availability and long lead time for delivery of the replacement pumps. The financial impact uh, approved budget amount is $81,000 and the funding source would be from the sewer funds. Uh, what's required tonight is to award construction contact and to declare CEQA okay. exception. Okay. Uh, does any member of the council have any questions or comments? Council member Henderson first. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Uh, thank you, Mr. City Manager for that report. This question is probably for Mr. Rigg as well as you, Mr. Uh, City Manager. In regards to how, how strict we are adhering to our, our scheduled maintenance plan. You know, uh, pump gets the poor condition that didn't just get there. Uh, how tight are we sticking to our scheduled maintenance of a lot of similar systems and dissimilar systems around the city and our, with our scheduled maintenance? How close are we to being in line with that? Uh, we've done poorly. Um, <laughs> I appreciate how the, 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 the council and the city manager put together the deferred maintenance fund where we're doing roofs right now. We, we've got quite a few systems, uh, primarily roofs that we're looking at trying to replace and catching up. The roof leaks, of course, lead to damage and, and walls and, and, and carpet. So um, one of our focuses as we're going through this budget cycle is I've reached out to, to all the other department heads to understand what's, what's deficient. We need to really get on top of this. Uh, the sewer pump in the police station went way too long and, and it's, it's a hazard. It, it should have been done and why it wasn't done before, I, I don't know. Maybe the, the, the chief's got better information on that. I don't know of anything as severe as the sewage pump. We've been putting band-aids on it for, for quite a while and it's, it's just done. So uh, it's a lot of money, but it's, it's, it's money well spent and we are working to, to catch up on that deferred maintenance. Thank you. As, um, I want to add to that too, as uh, uh, Alan uh, stated, there's a lot of there's a lot of things uh, infrastructure wise in the city that has been neglected over the past 10, 15, 20 years, um, simply because no fund no funding was was set aside to to do this. And when things uh, started started to break, um, you know they just put band aids and patches on them. There's not not really a, a good uh, way to that's not a good way to 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 manage infrastructure number one um, 
And so, as Alan said, we we started recently started putting together a replacement fund so that when things come, not waiting for uh, things to break, but as, as, as we know that things are going to be breaking in the near future as, as dictated by the life expectancy of the units, uh, we're able to do that before they start breaking and, and uh, causing more problems. Uh, so right now we're in the middle of uh, funding all of these things. Well, luckily, we have uh, you know uh, relatively healthy reserves now, uh, and I'm not talking about our general reserves. I'm talking about the infrastructure reserves, um, and so we can now get ahead of ourselves and start doing these things. Uh, unfortunately, Alan, you're going to be busier than ever, but it's a good thing. Yeah. Uh, we're able to get ahead of ourselves. Council uh, Mayor Pro Tem Tanaka. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Uh, Mark, thank you for that uh, that question because uh, if it weren't for our current infrastructure fund that we do have, um, I can tell you when I was a policeman in that police department, that sewer backup was horrendous. It, it was the absolute worst. And uh, like uh, the city manager said, it was always band-aids and, and quick fixes uh, to try to fix it, but it, it just, it's it's our employees. We need to take care of them. They're in that they're in that building for 24 hours a day, seven days a week, and we owe it to them to get things like this fixed. So, uh, Director Riggs, thank you very much. Uh, it, this is going to be a plus for that police department uh, as far as the sewer and the sewer smells go. But that infrastructure fund will help to maintain our our buildings and the things that we need to fix for our employees. So um, uh, kudos to y'all for taking care of this. Thanks. Are there any other questions, comments? Uh, Councilman Cascani? Thank you, Madam Mayor. Uh, my question is for Alan again. Uh, Alan, the, the price difference of the, the bid, it's between 147, 410, was low, as low as at 80,000. And I know I see that uh, you know OC pump company. They are well established company since 1948. What do you think is the price difference this much off? You're like it's almost half. So we, when we got the bids, we always like tight bids at the low end, so we know that we nobody's leaving anything on the table. And our first question when we saw the bid is we were excited, but at the same time fearful because we don't want to get into a, a contract with a substandard contractor that's going to make it up for an extras. So we had a, a very frank conversation with the contractor and said, you know, we're not going to give you extras on this and you need to just go forward on the contract, but we'll let you out if you want to, because um, if you've left something out and you've messed up your bid, um, they want the job. They say they do They're They have a lot of employees in house. They don't subcontract out. Um, they're hungry for the work. And so, uh, they, they, they we're always, of course, uh, required to award a, a public works construction contract to the lowest responsive and responsible bidder. So their contractor was responsive. They have the proper licenses. Um, so they're responsible and we gave them the, the uh, extra opportunity to, to, have, to get out of it um, and knowing that we're going to hold them to a tight plan. So what, one thing we did do is rather than just having them kind of design, build it, go in there like a typical plumbing job, we come up, we came up with a set of plans and specs. And so it's a very specific bid on a very specific plan. And so there isn't a whole lot of unknowns. As the city manager mentioned, there was a job walk. They've seen it, they've touched it and, and they're ready to do it. So um, I, I share your, your initial fear, but I think we've done everything uh, legal and, 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 and appropriate to confirm that they're gonna be able to do the job at their bid price. Yeah, I know, but uh, you know, they say that you know you get what you pay for. I just want to make sure you know they putting the right equipment. You know the, you know they don't they don't use you know lower end equipment or something. Then maybe in a year or two, you know, it breaks down or do we have on the same loop again? No, I agree, and that's that's why we. Uh, th this started. This came to our attention in probably August September that it was getting that bad. And so we hired an engineer, we put together the, the plans and the specs. It took a while for us to bid. We used our on-call list, which helped us expedite it. We still got four good bids. And um, yeah, no, uh, I think it's as tight as can be and with, with, with everything we could do. 
Okay, thank you. Thank you. Any more questions or comments? Okay, Madam City Clerk, do we have anybody from the public wishing to speak on this item? No, we do not, Madam Mayor. Okay, that being said, um, okay, that being said, can I get a motion uh, to award the construction contract and uh, also we'll be declaring this a CEQA exemption? So moved. Is there a second? I'm sorry, is there a second? Second, Henderson. Okay, Madam City Clerk, there was a motion made by Mayor Pro Tem Tanaka and a second by Council Member Henderson. Will you call the vote, please? Mayor Pro Tem Tanaka. Yes. Council Member Henderson. Yes. Council Member Cascanian. Yes. Council Member Francis. Yes. Mayor Serta. Yes. Okay, next up is item number 15D, Mr. City Manager. Mayor Serta, members of the City Council. Gen item 15D is Gradina Public Geographic Information System or GIS viewer. June 20, in June 2021, Public Works Department began working with, to develop a geographic information system for the city of Gardena. The GIS is a computer-based mapping and information system. GIS enables the city to link information about places, events, and facilities to their correct location on a map, thereby providing a, an easy access to the graphical and tabular information. Smaller cities like Gardena are best served utilizing an outside vendor to host the GIS data and, no, uh, and to provide a browser for staff and the public to access the data. Staff requested proposals from various GIS vendors and found Nobel systems to be the best qualified and at a very reasonable cost of $20,000 per year. Public Works Director Alan Rigg had previously worked with uh, Nobel and had found them to be excellent in providing similar services. Over the past six months, Nobel has worked to accumulate and host data and, and the city uh, has generated uh, in the community, community development department, including land use, zoning, and general data, general plan data. Nobel has also added links to data provided by outside agencies, such as the Sessions Office, LA County Public uh, Department, the LA County Department of Public Works, Pima, and the Census Bureau. It is planned that additional data will be added to the system, including development projects, city sewers, traffic counts, trash pickups uh, of the day and the week. Even, even more data can be developed by the city or an outside vendor and Nobel will add it to the system. Nobel Systems uh, has provided the use by city staff of one version of a browser for this data and uh, that, have, that has robust capab capabilities for analysis of the data. A simplified version of this browser for the public is now ready to make available uh, to the public without the analysis tools. The Gardena Public GIS Viewer is, simple, is a simple website that needs no username or password. Our plan is to link it to our website for the public to use. The financial impact is $20,000 as far as the budget. Funding source is $2,000 from Measure W, $6,000 from Measure M, $12,000 from the sewer funds. The what's required tonight is to receive and file. I believe we have a presentation tonight. Okay, let's go ahead. I think I'm gonna go ahead and share my screen here. You guys see that okay? Yes. Okay, thank you. Um, again, timing is everything. Uh, we were, we've were we been working on this and when Council Member Henderson brought it up the last meeting about GIS, it was, um, it was good timing. So what I would like to show you is, is that tonight I'll be brief. Um, and, and just remember, it's it's a beginning and we have much more to do. So what I've done is all I've done is put in the very simple website. And you can go ahead and click on the, the uh, system. So uh, as the city manager described, our GIS system is now up and running. The staff has been using it for seven months for detailed analysis of data and a particular for radius maps. We actually currently have 64 staff members who have reached out to us and have login credentials. This next week, we will launch the public view and I will give a demonstration of some of the capabilities here. You can see the basic uh, uses of our new GIS. Just to clarify, tonight is a demonstration of new capabilities we will provide to our residents and businesses under an existing contract, which will help increase transparency and requires no action uh, by you tonight except to, to receive and file. Uh, I'd like you to see there's, these are the different layers that we've built up so far on the left side of the screen. And I'd like to, to indicate that we wanna add a whole bunch of additional information. 
The first thing, and working with the city clerk's office, I know this is one of our, our biggest headaches, which is what is the boundary of the city of Gardena? And here you can see it's, it's rather regular. Uh, one of the areas, one of the things that's interesting is people um, think and wish they were in the city of Gardena, but you can see even parcels east of the freeway, you go in and click on them, they still have the Gardena mailing address. So when people call and they wanna say, am I gonna live in Gardena or not? They can go ahead and make a decision. They may be looking at different houses to buy, but now they can look at the boundary and see they can actually be within our city. Another issue that we get into quite a bit is um, who owns the street and who needs to work on stuff. In particular, you can see this is an interesting area here, the red line being the boundary of the city of Gardena. So here's Gardena, here's uh, Hawthorne County of LA, whatever it might be, Torrance actually, I'm sorry. And you can see how the boundary on, on Artesia is actually at the North Curb line. And on Grand Mercy Place, where I know we get complaints of speeding and dilapidated street conditions, it's actually entirely within the city of Torrance. So it helps our staff and helps our residents and potential residents to take a look and see where is actually the, the boundary. I'd like to go in, I'm gonna click on one of the uh, properties here. You can click on any property. And in this tab, you can see a variety of different information. Give you the address, the APN, the year it was built. As we're talking, there's homes here from the 20s, as well as the, the acreage of the property. Um, all of this data is a simple link to the assessors, LA County assessors website. So one thing that we're very particular of is if we're gonna go ahead and give information to the public, that it's either information that we're sure of, if we're gonna produce it, that's not personal, we're gonna be impactful, uh, but also we link the data to other websites that are publicly available. There's other information that's available on the website. Um, one of them is liquefaction zones. I'll go ahead and click on that. And here you can see this is a layer from FEMA that goes through and shows where there's areas of liquefaction. So if you were gonna develop a home, this might indicate that you have to have deepened footings in the area that you, uh, if you're in these areas because of the sandy soil and possibility uh, of liquefaction. Some other information that's that's maybe not as useful on a day-to-day -day basis, but when we need it, it's gonna be very valuable. From the assessor again, I think it's from the assessor. We have the um, census tract information. We also have the census block information. So very detailed data. As you can see, you zoom in, you can see it. You can click on a parcel, you can get what block it's in. Another interesting uh, feature that we have from the, um, from the county, fortunately, and not from the County Department of Public Works is on our storm drains. So you can click on the storm drain layer and you can see all of our storm drains, which way they're going. You can zoom in, you can see catch basins, you can see manholes, you can see how they all flow down to the Dominguez Channel. And so this is very important information for us as a city maintaining our catch basins and also for a lot of the low flow development from um, new developments that want to connect to catch basins, they'll be able to, to see where they're out, where they are. I'm gonna go ahead and zoom uh, into a parcel. And, and when, when we started this, the community development department had spent a lot of time developing uh, data per parcel, as far as these last three uh, items here, which are very, very valuable, and it's going to be very valuable for the public to see. First, the general plan. So you can click on a parcel, this one here. You can see the general plan, it's it's low residential. See what's actually the land use is, the same parcel as low density residential. And then finally, you can go into zoning, you can see that it's R1. So when developers come into town and they want to find a certain zone parcel, and they wanna see what's around it, it should be a, a great tool for them to look at. I know Mr. Henderson, Council Member Henderson had directed us towards the long, city of Long Beach and some data they developed um, for, for current developments. And i am be working with uh, Director Saguchi in, with the new economic development manager to work with the COG to develop that data and then we'll add it to our system. Although we, we do have a significant amount of information in the system right now, uh, it's simply a starting point. We're gonna add our sewers. 
we can, there's all sorts of additional data uh, that we can provide. I forgot probably the easiest one we just added, which is a trash pickup schedule. So if somebody wants to know when the trash is and moving into town, they forget, here it is. Uh, I'd like to add street sweeping schedules. I've done that in other cities, but it, it's really a palette for us to provide information quicker and easier to the public. Uh, we intend to roll this out with a link to our website this next week. And um, I look forward to getting suggestions on additional data you'd like to see on it, because it's simply, again, a palette in which we can develop over time. Uh, the data we own that we develop, and if we ever leave this vendor, it goes with us to, to another one. So okay. that would conclude my, my report, and I'm available for any questions. Okay, I have a question. Um, maybe about 10 years ago, and I can't remember which meeting I went to, something like SCAG or COG, there was a system similar to this, and it also had like heights of different uh, buildings within a city, um, higher or lower. Is that something that we might look at doing later on? You know, it, that, that's a very good point. And I, I've developed that in other cities. Mm -hmm. And eventually, once we get done with our sewer master plan, what I would like to do is a storm drain master plan. And part of that effort is hydrology. And in order to do the hydrology, you need topographic information for the whole city. So I, I would think that would be a logical point at which we could have all the, the data for tops of buildings. We would have the information for for street elevations and, and parks and all over. We'd have spot elevations and contours. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Um, Council Member uh, Tanaka. Yeah. So <clears throat> Real quickly, as the representative for the South Bay COG, uh, they're doing a GIS system. Have we reached out to them to try to uh, at least merge or get get kind of on the same line? Yes, uh, yes, Mayor Pro Tem, we we did reach out to them. The service that the COG is 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 offering is 20 hours of free GIS services, and that would pri primarily be in the building of data. Okay. So in a GIS system, you have the building of the data, you have the maintenance of the data and the hosting of the data. Uh, they haven't had anybody take advantage of that yet, but it's our intent to, to use them when we develop the layer that will be the, develop, the, the developments in the city. Okay. But we will use that free service. They don't really do the hosting or the maintenance, right. but they do the development. So we will take advantage of that. Okay, thank you. Welcome. Uh, Mayor, I have a question. Go ahead. Go ahead. All right. Uh, thank you definitely, uh, Mr. Reed, for this report. And as we become a truly a smart city, definitely want to thank my colleagues for also uh, sharing that vision and transparency. A question I had in regard, and I didn't even think about this, we talked about the privacy and everything. Let's talk about the security of this data. And I know we can't prevent everything, but is there an opportunity for us to get with the chief of police to talk about, and this data does exist in other places in the world, but as far as safeguarding ourselves from terrorist attacks. You know, because now our, our, our sewage plan is here, our pipeline is here, storm drains, general plan, land use. Is there some some opportunity for us to get with the police chief to talk about securing our, our infrastructure and what we can do about that to prevent that? That's a good point. And that's something that we will do. After the one thing you've probably heard of as well is after 9-11, a lot of the utilities that used to freely uh, provide information, especially the electric company, the, the gas company, and the water company. And because of the threat of terrorist threats um, to those different facilities, those agencies are, are very stingy with, with their, their information and you will never find it on a GIS. So um, definitely we could take a look and as we add each layer to make sure that it's not perceived as some kind of a risk. Okay, thank you. Okay, any other questions or comments? Um, I have two quick questions. So I noticed what has like the little Google map in the corner. Does that mean when you click on, let's just say you click on one particular area and you zoom in, will it, besides showing like the satellite view, will it ever, okay, I guess it is zooming in the way I thought. Will it ever let you go further down where you see the front of the building, kind of like Google Earth does? It does. And you know, I brought this up on Mozilla Firefox and I can't get, I, I noticed as soon as I had it ready, Okay. It has a street view. And actually, what's two two things, actually. One, see if this will work. Um, yeah, so one thing I didn't show you is it does give you all the, I'll turn this off. So, and I'll turn this off. So these are all the, the roadway speeds. So we oh. can uh, potentially use this to detect if there's accidents 
And if we're having backups due to roadway uh, projects, and, and I don't know why the, the street view doesn't work, but it's, it's really a neat street view because it gives you a much better perception of what you're looking at when you're pointing a particular direction. Uh, it, it works in, a, in Chrome, and I, I decided to bring it up in this because it seemed easier, but yes, it, it does work. And it's in real time because I guess if that's the current accident yep. or slowing down or? The one other feature it has also, it has a very robust uh, print feature that if you want to go ahead, I know it's it's tough to, um, print from, from Google Earth, mm -hmm. but here you can go, you can print whatever you want. It's got a very, very robust, and this could have been whatever you want. You could be your zoning. So developer comes in and he says, you know, I want to develop over here on, uh, let's go on a commercial street on Western. We turn off the, um, we turn off the, the roadways. And he says, I want to develop this parcel and I want to see what the zoning is in the area. Mm -hmm. And so he can go right in and he can print that and or a realtor, whoever might want to do it. It's easy to show quickly wow. what they have and what the opportunities might be. It's nice. Mm -hmm. Nice. Very nice. Madam Mayor, I have one more thing I wanted to add. Sure, go ahead. Thank you very much for giving me the opportunity. Mr. Rick, in regards to operating this tool, I know sometimes we get uh, excited about our tool, but nobody knows how to use it. So it doesn't get used. <laughs> is, the, is there a possibility of us creating some like a, a tutorial, YouTube tutorial we can put on our website for our community so they can kind of walk through it? And use this <clears throat> as a possibility. Sure, sure. It's um, the the difference between the version that I'm showing you right here and what city staff uses. This is significantly simpler, dumbed down for lack of a better term. So you just you click and you see it, but there is some legend information. But definitely we could do that, um, and maybe a rollout and do a do an announcement, and we do a Zoom and we go through it similar to what I just did with you, and we could show uh, show the community the the version which which staff has. You can you can measure things, you can do radius maps. You actually have we have a, a what's the service? It's um, it shows all the real estate data. And so you see owners' names and, and, and very detailed reports of data that, that staff can use that we, we, we don't roll out to the community because that would be inappropriate. But a training class is a great idea and definitely something we'll do. Okay, thank you. So this would be available, the version that's available to the community, like on our city website or? Yeah, this is exactly what would be available to the public with all the the same bells and whistles. And as we build data, they'll have access to that as well. Same as like the county assessor one. Okay. Yeah. And, and there are, and, and I've thought about that as we, maybe we have links because you can go to, you can go to the, the property data that goes to the assessor's information. But if you go to the assessor's website, you get much more information. You get the, the assessor's map or the different parcels and like. So there is additional data. If you go directly to those websites on the storm drains, you can click on them and you actually get the size of the storm drain on the county website and and the, the lengths of pipes and everything else. So hmm. um, the data that we receive is a link to the assessor's office, uh, county um, public works and the like, and the other ones, it's, it's a simpler version than what they have on there. But this gets uploaded and uh, refreshed, I think once a month, they pull okay. the data again and refresh it to the most current uh, from the from those different outside websites that we're use, utilizing. Okay. I, I, right now, I know you had a question. If you don't mind me asking this one quick question while he's on pipes here. So being that we show some of the pipes here, how in detail does, does it show as far as what pipes are where? Because for instance, like I know down Rosecrans, I hear that there's gas pipelines that are going down there like Chevron and so on like that. Or does it just say, hey, we have pipes here? Uh, we, we wouldn't, that, that data is not public. That's not public. Uh, okay. No, the, the data, and, we, and I know we've got the pipelines on Rosecrans is, again, mm -hmm. with the terrorist threat, anything that could be sabotaged and the like, right. whether it be oil, gas, electric, uh, that data is just simply not public from those agencies. Got it. Okay. Thank you. Uh, Mayor Potem? Uh, thank you, Madam Mayor. So, um, <laughs> Councilman Henderson got my wheel spinning about when he started talking about the 
police department. So we, we do district policing and uh, Director Riggs, this is a great program, but with our district policing, they put out crime maps like you're showing. Is it possible for us to uh, allow the public to see our uh, crime stat maps? Well, I could absolutely put it up there. It would, uh, of course, be up to yeah. the chief if you wanted to release it to the public. But uh, I mean, are you, are the other other areas in the neighborhood watch. We well, the dis each steps. district has their uh, district lieutenant, and the lieutenant puts out a city map, and it just mm -hmm. kind of shows where say the auto thefts are, the burglaries, the robberies, those kind of things. And it's just a, it's a spot map. And so on your left-hand side for your ledger, if you had a little thing that just said crime stats or something, they could maybe put those maps up just so people could see what what's there. Sure, absolutely. Um, I would leave it to him if, if he was comfortable putting that, uh, how detailed he'd want to put that data out there. Maybe if it was a crime right here. You wouldn't put it on the parcel, but you'd put a big blob. And right. I'm sure there's a way we could do it in which we could convey the information, uh, enough of a location that people would know, but wouldn't uh, jeopardize. Uh, right. It's specific air, kind of area like thing. It's just, it's like in this area, we had this in this area. that. It's wide open, whatever, whatever we want them to host, whatever we're willing to develop, uh, we'll go out. We can we can do it just for for the uh, for for staff. I mean, this tool also could be used. We have layers that are just for staff, and and maybe in the police department they plot all the locations with the exact addresses, and they can do some kind of of crime analysis. It's it's, it's right. a, There's so many opportunities with GIS. Okay. Yeah, thanks. That that's a it's a good program. I like it. Thank you. Okay. All right. Any more questions or comments? Madam City Clerk, do we have anybody from the public um, who has a question or comment? Um, no, we do not, Madam Mayor. Okay, well, very good. Um, well, Alan, thank you very much. It was very informative. As you can see, the whole council was just very excited about this project. Um, really good. And I guess if anybody has any suggestions, um, things that you know, uh, we think that the community might be interested in, I'm sure we can share with share that with the city manager, and he can refer it over to a uh, to uh, Alan and uh, go from there, so. Will do, thank you very much. Yeah, thank you. You know, I just thought about something. We have a, a park that has uh, recycled water. I don't know if that's important to put on there either, so. <laughs> I don't know, just an idea. But anyway, we're gonna, information. Yeah, <laughs> we're gonna receive a call this item here. A lot of information. Okay, um, next up is council directives. Does any member, member of the council have a directive um, that they, uh, go ahead, Councilman Cascania. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Uh, Mr. City Manager, uh, I, I asked this question probably a year ago or two years ago. What's going on on uh, southeast corner of Western and Marine? That abandoned building has no no uh, no doors. Uh, you know, homeless people sleep in it, and some graffiti is going on again. So uh, I heard last time that. Uh, Coffee beans was coming there, and this one was two years ago. So, do we know what's going on over there? Not, not off the top of my head. Um, since it's a prior director, I can just give you an update again. I think we we gave you an update before, um, but I think at that time we said the last update we gave you was that we said that um, uh, they're putting up boards and they're getting ready for some uh, uh, changes in there and. Um, we haven't heard anything back, so I think it's time to do an update again. Yes, please, uh, because uh, there is uh, some issues that you know, I drive up on that street maybe a gazillion times a day, and I see people are coming in and out that uh, that building, and I even you know called the authorities as well to you know follow up what's going on there. So, I'll give you a follow up. Yes, second. Uh, art for that? I think so, yeah. Okay, Okay. I'll second that. Thank you. Okay. Any other directors? Uh, Madam Mayor, I have one. Go ahead. So I know we, we've been fighting Sacramento local control. I, I would like to see if we could get some uh, research on the resolution to create a resolution to oppose initiative 21-0042 Alpha 1. It's something that the league is looking into uh, in regards to 
uh, business taxes and controlling uh, tax revenues and bypassing the voters and different things like that. I think the business community is looking to to put something on the ballot. And I was wondering if we could just kind of get some research on potentially creating a opposition resolution. Yeah, Council Member uh, Henderson, I know that the League of Cities has provided us with uh, some information already um, on this potential possible initiative that we can forward to all of the council members. I know there's an attached um, resol proposed resolution in opposition that they have provided us as well. So we can forward all that to each one of you um, since it's information that the League has already put out. Um, and then if you choose um, to give, you know, in future meeting a directive that you want us to prepare that opposition resolution, we'd be more than happy with that suffice your request at this time. Yeah, that would be great. Perfect. That way everybody can kind of look at it. Absolutely. What will do. Thank you. Thanks for asking for that, Mark. Oh, no problem. Yeah, that was a good one. Any more directives? Oh, yes, Madam Mayor. Go ahead. Um, I'm, I'm asking, you know, is, is the property there on El Segundo and Crenshaw? We approved a project there almost a year ago, and um, there's been um, there's been some clean. At first, there was an old um, motorhome that was parked there for a long time, and then there's, you know, we we uh, did Gardena Direct on it. They moved it, and then there's a wreck car, and then they moved it. Well, now there's. Uh, I'm just trying to figure out who's responsible for making sure this this project. They put Bob wire on top of the fence as if to keep someone out, but the fence is falling and falling down. So you can just walk right through it. There's a trash bin there. Um, and it's just, um, and then the whatever screen they, they try to put up is flying in the air. And yeah. we keep reporting to Guardian Direct and all that, but who is um, responsible for making sure that that property is maintained? And, and I mean, because it's right there, it's going to Crenshaw. And after, after so many times, you know, being reported, what what can we do to make sure they clean this property up? Or at least, you know, put in until they do something about it. Their old buildings there, people were homeless. People were sleeping in there at one time. So what what can we do? Nothing. Councilwoman Francis, if it's okay with City Manager Osorio, I would like to discuss it first with code enforcement as to what the current status is. is you know, in, in prior properties that we've had similar issues, we've sought litigation and receivership actions. And I don't know, this isn't, I'm, I'm not having that conversation yet um, for, but at least um, if it's okay with you, we can have code look into it and then provide an update. So Mr. City Manager, is that okay with you? That's fine. Yeah, I'll second that because um, you're right, that, that RV out there and so on. I was wondering too, so. Yeah, thank you. Mm -hmm. may, may I have one more thing? Okay, hold on a second. Councilman Francis, were you finished? Oh, sorry. Thank you. Okay, go ahead. All right, this is more of a, a question. Mr. Sand, and this might be a phone call, not necessarily a directive. What what are the parameters that that prevent us and or allow us to create an internship when we're spending our dollars for professional services, like a 15 or 20 hour a week opportunity for some high school or college student in the discipline that we're working. So for instance, we have explorers, the assumption is they'll work in public safety. And this particular thing that we did uh, for professional services, there will be a public works type of uh, student or somebody who's working in some, some engineering field or something like that. Is there anything that disallows us or does not allow us to actually put that in our, our, our contract for professional services? that you should provide 20 hours of internship work and then the city of Gardena can kind of oversee those students? Or is that a phone call or is that, cause that's really not a major director, it's kind of a question. So we we currently utilize a lot of interns now. You do right. that now, um, you know, ranging from, a, a, you know, different tasks or disciplines here at the city hall, uh, city manager's office, uh, city, Clerk's office, I believe, has have, has had uh, intern admin services has had uh, interns in the past. Um, you know, we can tap into that as far as um, uh, individuals interested in, in in these type of things. But I think what you're asking for is before we get into a contractual agreement with the contractor, are we are we asking them to are we mandating them to use 
um, intern individuals as part of the program, as far as the, the contract. Right, and I don't really want to say a mandate because I don't think you can really tell people how to create their staff, but is there something that stops us from doing that? So that may be just a so phone call or a question. There's some legal implications with controlling their staff and the potential exposure that they would have. Um, can we promote that we encourage them to um, hire interns? I mean, that that's something we can encourage, but we can't mandate them, nor can we um, base the awarding of the contract on that mandate either. Wasn't there a, wasn't there a program where we allowed um, youth that were interested in like public works or um, other departments that they could come and like uh, volunteer their time and be like learn the job? I forget that there was a program. I forget the name of it, but. Uh, kids could come and, and apply and we could actually put them on jobs to learn like an apprentice. We have, um, we have partnerships with Long Beach and Dominguez for interns. Uh, uh, you know, I mean, we, we typically have in any given year, we have a, a number of different interns that we assign to different departments, depending on the field that they actually choose. Um, but as far as an actual program in the city, I, I don't, I don't recall having a, an actual name of the program that actually deals with it. I think, I think we, it was a, it was like a summer program where kids can come down and, and volunteer during the summer. I forget what it was called. But, um, I mean, we can certainly. So let, let me think it through a little more. I just wanted to kind of see, because I don't want to make it a directive tonight to kind of tighten it up a little bit just to see what we can do. But I was just thinking about that. We have our explorers program that we support and or fund. Is this an opportunity for us to figure out how we could do something for some of the other disciplines as we start talking about capacity building and future employees and different things like that? Yeah, I mean, we, we're open to that because we, we, we use interns now on a regular basis. Yeah. Uh, so it, I think it's just a matter of, it might be just a matter of matching them with the, the, the field that they, well, we do that now. And we ask them, hey, you know, what would you like yeah. to, what would you like to learn while you're here? Because it's a two-way street. Right. Um, we get to utilize them and, and in turn, um, they get to learn about city government. But it's their choice where they want to, where they want to go. Okay. Uh, but we highly, highly encourage that now with, with the students and we, we take them in on a regular basis. Okay. All right. So that's, that's someone I wanted to kind of bring forward. And I'll call you as I kind of think it through a little more. Thank you for your time. Okay. Any more directors? No? Okay. Uh, let's move on to city manager remarks regarding our previous directors. Mayor Serta, members of the city council, I have two memos that have been sent to the city council. The first one is uh, council directed by council member Henderson regarding options available to make uh, financial transparency for the public uh, and make it more feasible. Um, we've identified three possible options, each coming with a price tag. Uh, so we just have to see which one fits our, um, uh, fits the city better. Second memo is uh, regarding recommendations for the removal of a red curb along Western Avenue uh, that was brought forward uh, uh, to the attention of Council Member uh, Henderson by one of our residents. The such removal of the red curb has been uh, recommended by traffic investigator Jose Zamudio and approved by Chief Sapel. I have a few announcements here. Share my screen. First one is first one is our free shredding event. Uh, it's going to take place uh, here at the City Hall Complex on Saturday, February uh, 19, 2022, uh, from 10 a.m. to 2 p.m. Um, there is a maximum of two boxes uh, per household, and that's 15 by 10 by 24 inch. 
uh, box and there is a proof of residency that is required. The Gardena Homeless Count is here again. At, uh, this is 2022 uh, happening in uh, one, on Wednesday, February 23rd uh, from 8 p.m. to 12 a.m. Uh, it's gonna be here at the corner of Western and uh, it's gonna be at 16206 uh, Western Avenue at the Juvenile Justice and Intervention Program uh, building. Uh, any information, uh, further information, uh, I can go to www.theycountwillyou.org. It's gonna have all the information you need. Um, gonna have uh, frequently asked questions as we have here in this flyer. Um, so just go to www.theycountwillyou.org. Last but not, certainly not least, uh, as you know, we've uh, postponed our uh, Dr. King, Dr. Dr. Martin Luther King uh, parade from January to uh, Saturday, uh, February 26th. Um, parade begins uh, promptly at 10 a.m. and it's going to be uh, be uh, beginning at Terre High and ends at Raleigh Park. This year's community, community grand marshals so is going to be uh, Dr. Rachel Johnson and Mr. Philip Johnson. And also, uh, same day and same time, Afternoon Park, celebrating Black History Month. Uh, it's gonna be at Raleigh Park, 13-220 South Van S, right here in the city of Gardena. And Madam Mayor, that sends my report. Okay, thank you. Um, next up is council remarks. We're gonna begin tonight with Council Member Cascania. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Since our last meeting, uh, I was pretty much quiet, so not much to do. Uh, I went and we present uh, a trophy to Cherry Stone. I was over there. Uh, congratulations to uh, Leonard Kim and his wife uh, for the award. And go Rams! <laughs> Sunday, Sunday we have a Super Bowl. Please drink responsibly. Don't drink and drive, stay at home. The couch is the best seat at home. So go Rams. Okay. That's it, Madam Mayor. All right, thank you. Um, next up is Council Member Henderson. Mayor, I think since our last get together, I uh, went to our special council session on, man, I, I just, it just threw a blank, but yeah, you all were there. element. Yeah, how's <laughs> <laughs> That thing. Yeah, that thing. Uh, and the environmental that. justice. Yeah, yeah, no, yeah, that's what it was. So everybody and I was knows, there too. That yeah, that that took me. I took that personal that environmental uh, justice element. So we'll talk about that at next meeting for sure. I uh, went to my BizFed responsible governance meeting. I uh, participated in the uh, LA County sustainability workshop and got some resources there in regards to what we can do in community sustainability. Uh, uh, participate in a meeting with SCAG in regards to this tool, similar to what was presented to us tonight. It's called Greenprint. And what Greenprint does, it allows for developers to look from a GIS standpoint of the green space in certain areas when they're doing development and different things like that. You know, every, every city, every county has got its issues. Some of our neighboring counties have issues with development and a lot of the green space that they have. So that's up for debate. So it's pretty interesting to kind of hear what they're concerned about. I attended my uh, South Bay Fiber Network meeting through the COG. We we're talking about next steps for communities and cities. So we're, we're kind of moving forward on that. I also uh, spoke with our new Senator and his staff in regards to some of the things that Gardena is looking to highlight what we're looking to do moving forward. I'm sure he's, if he hasn't already met with some of you already, Senator Ben Allen, uh, which will be representing now our, our city. Uh, I'm sure he's going to reach out to each one of you. I know we all have our different things that are near and dear to our hearts and everybody that, that supports us as we all support the city of Gardena. So he wants to hear from uh, all of us. And uh I'll wait till we'll talk about the environmental justice element. Again, at that meeting, I, I took that a little personal because it, it highlighted a lot of things that I felt that we were doing. So it's just kind of now making sure that we are keeping up with that 
And then maybe we aren't doing some of those things as it was stated this evening, we aren't up on our deferred maintenance. So now we need to really get up on that. So there are room, there is room for improvement. There are a lot of things that we can do, but I think the past five or six years, there are a lot of accomplishments that we should be proud about in regard as uh, what a body can do. So again, I want to thank my colleagues for having some vision and being supportive of one another as we keep moving Gardena forward. But Madam Mayor, that ends my report. Okay, thank you. Um, next up is Council Member Francis. Yes, uh, since the last, last time we met, um, I attended a special award presentation of the Dr. Martha Luther King Jr. Culture Committee essay contest winners. Uh, we um, presented, you know, due to COVID, we weren't able to have our our, um, our normal Friday night youth program. So we did a special presentation on Saturday, January 29th, and we presented the, the certificates and scholarship awards to our um, elementary, middle school, and high school students for second and third place. I also uh, attended as a judge for the Gardena Lions speech contest. Heard two um, two speakers, two speech uh, contestants, and they spoke on. They asked the question whether or not kindness could unite our country, and got some uh, two very interesting perspectives. And and um, let's see. I also want to uh, encourage everyone to come out and to our Dr. Martha King Jr. Commemorative Parade and Black History Month celebration. And I want to announce our official Grand Marshal for this year's parade are our CIF state championships, the Sarah High School football team. So they're gonna be our Grand Marshals, Dr. Johnson and Philip Johnson are gonna be our community Grand Marshals. But I think it's really important that uh, as much as we complain about our young people and the things they do and they don't, things they're not doing. I think it's really important that we all come out and celebrate our young folks that are succeeding, being successful. So please come on out. That's again, that's Saturday, February 26th. And again, it will be in con conjunction with our Black History Month uh, celebration at Athlon Park. We're also going to have a battle of the bands and a battle of the drum line. So it's going to be a great afternoon. And um, this Black History Month, please uh, be sure to um, take a look at some information about the achievement of African-Americans to our um, to our country, our, our great country. And I look forward to the day where it'll be, all our history will be in one book. Everything will be taught at, at the same time. And I think that'd be a great day. And um, Valentine's Day is coming up uh, Monday. So I want to wish everybody happy Valentine's Day. And of course, um, be safe. They say that they're the stadium, SoFi Stadium seats 70,000, but there are 150,000 folks that are going to be in our city, well, not in our city, but in attending Super Bowl. So be safe as uh, Customer Castanian, Cascanian uh, suggested, don't drink and drive, stay at home and enjoy the game and go Rams. Thank you. That concludes my remarks. Okay, thank you. Better the days ahead of us. <laughs> Okay, um, and for myself, uh, just a couple of quick things because COVID's still going on, so I'm trying to just kind of stay in a little bit more. But um, I did get the opportunity to attend uh, Cherry Stones um, as we gave them their uh, championship banner, um, and that was a lot of fun uh, awarding uh, them that. Um, they did an amazing job for those people who uh, missed out on the competition. So we definitely want to encourage everybody to go buy Cherry Stones and check out their, their famous chili that they're known for like everywhere. And I guess it should have been to no surprise that they would win um, because when you go to Cherry Stones, that's what you want, the chili, uh, amongst all the other good food. So happy that we were able to attend that. Um, also, since the last council meeting, um, I too attended the uh, City Hall um, housing um, element meeting, as well as the environmental justice meeting um, by Zoom and very good meetings, a lot of good information there. So um, I, I really enjoyed uh, both of those meetings. So thank you guys, those who uh, did the presentation for that. And then um, something else here. Oh, I'd like to give a special thank you to the guys over in Public Works for fixing the manhole 
on 139th Street, right in front of the property, 2121. I've been meeting to report this, and it seems that they fixed it either this morning or yesterday because it was raised up about four inches higher than the street. And every time my car would drive over, it would make this weird, I don't know, clump sound or whatever. But um, thank you so much for fixing that. It's such an improvement. Anybody who drives down 139th Street from Van Ness to Western, you know exactly what I'm talking about. So um, please, Alan, share that uh, with the... The, uh, the staff there at Public Works, um, so happy for that. And then lastly, um, as it's been said earlier tonight, go Rams. Um, if you do have the opportunity to go to the game, ride our 7X line. It's only $4 round trip. You can get on right at 182nd and Vermont. As I've been telling everybody, there's no fee for the parking. So you can park for free and you're only paying for the round trip uh, bus ride, which is about 30 minutes for $4. And um, it's friendly, it's fast, uh, the buses are nice, they're comfortable, they're air conditioned. And um, it's a nice way to just jump on the bus and go and you get dropped off literally right in the front. So um, if you were lucky enough to get tickets to go to a Rams game, um, to, a, to the game on a, this coming Sunday, the SoFi game. So um, that's all I have uh, for myself. And uh, next up is uh, Mayor Pro Tem Tanaka. Thank you, Madam Mayor. So yeah, the cheapest seat is about 3,500 for one seat. And parking is $800 for VIP parking. And uh, I'm sorry to rain on your parade, but I think uh, Caltrans is charging $5 to park in the lot wow. for Super Bowl. But uh, we're still only charging $4 round trip for the bus. So 7X is still there. Uh, and you did a great uh, commercial for our bus line. Uh, at SoFi, so thank you very much. Uh, and and one other thing is, uh, city manager talked about our uh, homeless count. You can actually go on uh, the website for that homeless count and register and do all the uh, preliminary, preliminary things that you need to do uh, in order to be a person that counts. So uh, go on that website, that's an important thing. Uh, so the last thing that we, uh, since the last meeting, uh, I did attend the housing element. Uh, unfortunately, I couldn't do the second one because I had the COG board meeting on Thursday, attended that. Uh, attended Cherry Stone's Banner Award. Uh, that was a great day. Um, it's kind of hard to beat a guy that's won chili contest uh, hand over foot year after year. Um, <clears throat> attended the COG's Legislative uh, Committee um, we have to start pressing for, uh, I think it's SB 809, uh, and it has to do, uh, I think, with uh, uh, the other thing that I attended was a South Bay's uh, housing trust uh, that uh, right now the COG is trying to uh, promote a housing trust uh, for the South Bay, um, and that would give us money if we did SB 809. Um, and uh, yes, Mark, uh, uh, Senator Allen, uh, I think I have a, an appointment with him next week. Um, and it's, it's, a, it's a good thing that he's reaching out to us because he's now a part of us. Um, and he's looking to see how much he can help us. So hopefully he can get some money in. Uh, and that, uh, Madam Mayor, ends my report. Okay, thank you. Um, so we mentioned already the announcements um, that are coming up. Um, over the next month here now. Um, so we're gonna move on to remembrances. Tonight we're gonna adjourn in memory of Mrs. Gloria Elaine Cooper, who was 85 years of age, and she was the beloved sister of WRG Municipal Affairs Manager, Bevan Thomas. She was born on March 7th, 1936 in uh, Clarendon, Jamaica, and transitioned on Saturday, June 29th, 2022. So at this time, the Gardena City Council will adjourn to the closed session portion of the City Council meeting at 7 p.m., followed by the regular City Council meeting at 7.30 p.m. on Tuesday, February the 22nd, 2022. So we are now adjourned. Okay. Go Rams. Good night, Good night everyone. Good night, everyone. Be safe. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night. Happy Valentine's Day. Happy Valentine's Day and better days are coming. <laughs>